Today's video is a story of Sadar wools, with nine of their vintage knitting patterns from the late 30s through World War II, as well as post-war, with a little bit of celebrity thrown in, and a pioneering woman in its boardroom, a yarn about a very successful UK wool brand that's definitely worthy of a film script. But before we jump in, clearly I failed with the daily posting, as was planned for the 12 Days of Christmas series, so please accept my apologies for that. However, I didn't want to abandon the stories I'd planned to tell you from the knitting patterns the Yarn Fairy brought, so I'll tone down the Christmas vibes and continue to finish the vintage pattern treats. The feature today from the Yarn Fairy is called Film Star Sadar, and I have nine main patterns to illustrate this story, plus a few extras. Now, I'm not saying that all of the models in today's patterns were stars of the big screen from Hollywood or the UK's very own film studios at the time, so let me explain. Television was still in its early days with the experimental first broadcast in the 1930s, but it wasn't until the 1950s that most households actually brought the first television. So it was film stars that cinema goers wanted to emulate at the time. Wool mills and knitting pattern companies saw this as a marketing opportunity. So you'll see Ealing Studios or Gainsborough Studio star Susan Shaw on Best Way Knitting Patterns at the time as just one example. But even when they didn't have stars, they tried to emulate them with the lighting, hair, makeup alongside the fashion style seen on the big screen, as this actually sold their product. Look closely and you will spot stars on the pattern too. Did you know that Sir Roger Moore was known as the Big Knit, as he was a prolific knitwear model during his early career, prior to James Bond of course? You will see him here in the Stitchcraft magazine from May 1952. Peyton's and Baldwin's number 698 has him in the bottom two left photographs, and he also appeared in many Sardar patterns too. The story of Sardar itself though is worthy of its own film script, so let's explore a bit of its history and in particular recognise an extraordinary woman. The mill manufacturer was started at Osset Mill, as seen in this summary of a trial in 1885, but moved to Bective Mill in Wakefield, Yorkshire, England. The first generation of Harrop brothers incorporated the business in 1880, and it was passed down the generations to Mrs. Jean Tyrell, known as Miss Harrop, before now being owned by a private equity firm, Lion Capital. Jean Tyrell was a pioneering woman, having worked in the business with her father, but took over the CEO position after his death in 1960 and the chairman's later. A time when women were really in London Stock Exchange public company boardrooms, she drove the business forward so it survived when many of its competitors didn't. You'll see from this article she saved the company thousands when the pound was devaluing by ordering items early. She obtained herself an OBE in 1982 for her services to the industry and continued to run the company until she was 75. Not many of us have had that commitment to our work or our colleagues. But her story isn't just about being a rarity in the boardroom. She was willing to invest in change via new technology to improve the manufacturing, sales process and marketing as well as keeping up with the fashions. If you're interested in industrial manufacturing of wool or just some superb knitting footage, please go and check out the Yorkshire Film Archive of Sadar's 1969 promotional video. I'll put a link in the description so you can watch it. It's a fascinating bit of history, taking you through the mill, adopting new technology with early computers to enable order and fulfilment, as well as a team of knitters test knitting patterns. Just look at the speed of the woman knitting with a local style from the North Country, with the right hand needle fixed under their arm. Another interesting fact, did you know that Sadar is leader of Sharpers? also a Sadar wool brand in the 1970s. Or, in Lord Kitchener's case, Sardar was the leader of the Egyptian army. Is it a coincidence we have a Kitchener stitch in knitting, named after him? Many rumours abide, but maybe that is a story for another day. Enough interesting background to the company, 
let's get on to the yarn fairy treats. The first treat is pattern number 530 and it's a pattern in Super Shetland wool in three ply. It's called Ladies Jumper with fancy stitch panels, which are knit in the front and back. It was available with long and short sleeves, and you can see this definitely inspired by movie posters of the time in the 1930s. It has a simple plain background which made it much easier to doctor any negatives or to recolour or tweak the lines of the model. If you look very closely, I think you can see the early Photoshop on the left where the waist was nipped in. The pattern was for a 32 inch bust so any experienced knitter would have been expected to add the necessary amount of stitches required to size it up or down if they, that was what they wanted. It took 9 ounces to knit the long sleeve version or 7 ounces for a short sleeve version if you wanted a blouse style. The second pattern is number 553. It was clearly styled to evoke Shirley Temple who was a child star at the time Following the 1934 success of her film Bright Eyes, do we now all have the song Good Ship Lollipop as an earworm? Or in 1935, Fox Films Curly Top? Do you think the model had a striking resemblance? This is a child's coat or frock pattern, and it's also knit in Super Shetland 3 ply wool. It was sized for a 4 to 6 year old and has a delicate diamond lace pattern with a zigzag across the pockets and cuffs. The 2D price and the Shirley Temple styling suggests it's the later 1930s, but still pre-war. The third pattern was definitely issued during World War II, and you will see leaflet number 774 has increased in price to 3 pence, or 3D as it was known. The back of the leaflet has a word about wool in wartime, this is a pattern for a headscarf and gloves, and the headscarf was knitted so it could be worn and knotted like a turban. That style of course was very popular at the time, as women went out to work in factories taking over jobs of men who had gone to war, headscarfs allowed them to have their hair in curlers hidden and safely out of way so that they could set their hair in victrioles whilst they worked. I'm sure with gas shortages meaning heating in homes was also more sparse, having your hair drying under a headscarf would have been also practical too. Let me know in the comments which film you think this pattern was evoking. As a starter, how about Joan Crawford in 1939's The Woman? Or Dorothy Lamour in The Road to Morocco in a more exotic style. British Pathé's 1942's film How to Turn a Headscarf into a Turban can also be found on YouTube. I'll leave a link in the description that can inspire you. And this would certainly have been shown to cinema goers at the time. So you don't even need to knit your own to enjoy the look. Let me know in the comments if you try it out. The fourth treat is number 875. The back of the leaflet asks knitters to be patient given the shortages in wool and certain colours, presumably due to the import of dyes. However, the styling of ladies' combinations, or kami combs as their pattern is called, is very glamorous indeed. It was also knit in Super Shetland 3 ply wool. I recently ran a poll on my Instagram stories and it was 50 50 whether people would wear hand knit underwear. Would you knit these cami combinations and wear them? At least if you knit it in wool, it would have some stretch, unlike knitted in cotton. This pattern uses ribbon straps and buttons at the gusset, so it was more practical than it looks at first glance. The fifth treat is number 921. The twin set was knitted in Coronella three ply yarn and it took seven ounces for this cardigan or five ounces for the jumper with short sleeves. It has a lovely 24 row pattern repeat with the texture made up simply of knits and pearls. It was sized for a 34 inch bust with a length of 18 and a half inches and a sleeve length on the cardigan of 18 inches. Due to the shaped armholes, it would certainly take more mass to resize this one. The sixth pattern treat is number 936, called simply Ladies Blouse. The lace pattern only required 4 ounces of Super Shetland 2 ply, so this would have been more drapey than the other 3 ply knits that we're seeing. Although not seen in the picture, the hem of the blouse was turned, and a piece of elastic added to fit the waist and this would certainly help to cinch in the blouse and stop it riding up from the skirts. 
The underarm sizing was for a 35 inch bust with a tension of 7.5 stitches to an inch. It was also made up with tailored shoulder pads with the pattern saying that these could be purchased at any large store. I wonder if they were rationed. Do you think this leaflet was playing homage to Hollywood's legend Vivian Lee from 1939's Gone with the Wind? Or a UK actress like Margaret Lockwood or Margareta Scott? who both starred in the 1941 film called Quiet Wedding, filled at Shepperton Studios. The seventh treat, pattern number 976, is on much thinner paper, due to paper rationing, but still keeping the same size and style of production. There's no advert on the back about wartime wool, but that may just be the instructions for this pattern are lengthier. This is for a 34 inch underarm size and use 4 ounces of Super Shetland 3 ply or Sadar's Coronella 2 ply yarn. The styling of this pattern reminds me of a young Judy Garland, so despite rationing, Sardar continued to evoke the glamour and escapism found in the cinema. The eighth pattern the yarn fairy brought is design number 1065, and this pattern has jumped up in price to 4 pence, the 4D you see on the front and has an amazing structured yoke inspiring its name, Leaf Pattern Jersey. It's written for a 34 inch bust, with 6 ounces of Sadar Super Shetland wool, or Karsha wool, both in 3 ply. This looks to me to be a post-war pattern. The hair styling of the time was now swept up into a high bun. The Road to Film franchise was continuing strong, with Bob Hope, Bing Crosby and Dorothy L'Amour in 1946 and they brought out Road to a Utopia set in Alaska and this pattern certainly reminds me of that. The last treat is a 1950s pattern I think, priced at 60. Sirdar produced this in four sizes from a 36 to 44 inch bust. Still not inclusive by current standards though. Pattern number 1617 is called Ladies Dolman Cardigan and it was now knit in a four-ply Sirdar Majestic Wool or Talisman Wool. The 44-inch chest requires 13 ounces, which is equivalent to about 370 grams. What does this remind you of? For me, it reminds me of a young Sophia Loren from the 1950s. Thank you, Yarn Fairy, for bringing us treats that allowed us to delve into another interesting tale of a Yorkshire yarn company and it's certainly taken us back in time to some truly vintage patterns that I hope will inspire your next vintage cast on. Or was it just enjoyable to go time travelling again and think of some of those vintage films? You could subscribe to the Knitting Pattern Easter channel to ensure you don't miss the next episode. As always, I've loved providing the pattern details so that you can do a search on the reselling sites or just be inspired to design your own patterns similar to those at the time. If you'd like to see more of these tales, you'll find a link for the other yarn treats in the 12 Days of Christmas series. Until next time, Pattern Easters, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy knitting! <laughs>